Um, thanks for the intro. Hello, everyone. I'm Yifan. I'm a software engineer on the data infrastructure team at Cora. In this lightning talk, Gabriel and I will share our journey of adopting trainos for tolerant execution mode at Cora. Before we dive in, I'd like to briefly introduce Quora. Quora is a question answer platform. Our mission is to share and grow the world's knowledge. People can share knowledge by answering the questions and gain knowledge by reading the answers. In this session, Gabriel and I will cover three parts. How Traino is used at Quora, the setup of Traino before and after implementing fault tolerant execution mode, and the benchmark results using fault tolerant execution. All right, let's talk about how we use Traino at Quora. Traino has four main use cases here. First, there are ad hoc queries. Traino is used for running ad hoc analysis at Quora, which varies greatly in complexity. Depending on what users want to achieve, these queries can take anywhere from a few seconds to several hours to execute. Second, we use Traino for our time series dashboards. These dashboards track internal company metrics, like how many people are visiting our sites, the number of questions being asked, the revenue we are generating, and so on. The queries for these dashboards usually run within a few seconds to a couple of minutes. Thirdly, we have ETL batch jobs. These jobs run on a regular basis, could be daily or hourly, and those queries typically take a few minutes to one to two hours to complete. And finally, we've got our A-B testing data pipeline on Traino. This is the heaviest Traino use case we have, and the queries will take anywhere from tens of minutes to around three to four hours. Now I'd like to share our Traino setup before and after implementing full tolerant execution FTE. So this is a table with Traino's use cases on the left side, along with query running time, and whether these use cases run with FTE on the right side. As you can see, before October 2022, we didn't have FTE enabled for all our use cases. And the problem we saw was if a query ran out of memory, we had to either scale up Traino clusters or set up a stricter concurrency control rule and then retry the query if we decided not to optimize the SQL itself. To resolve the out of memory issue after October 2022, we started to shift many use cases to FTE, except for ad hoc and time series dashboard queries. This change led to fewer out of memory errors, which was great, but we also observed a rise in costs and slowdowns when running short queries. To address these issues in April, 2023, we came up with a new strategy to use FTE mode only for long and heavy queries, particularly some of the ETL queries and A-B testing queries. The lighter and the faster queries were left run on non fault tolerant clusters. This setup turned out to be a better solution for us in terms of both query failure rate and overall query execution time. Now I'd like to pass it over to Gabriel to discuss the actual benchmark results and share further details. Yeah, thanks Eliza. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about the results we got at Quora when using fault tolerance mode. I'd like to start by talking about the query failure rate. So when we started using the fault tolerance mode, we got a reduction of the query failure rate by about 71%. And that's because of two main reasons. First of all, uh, queries can now su survive any occasional worker failure. 
So let's say one of the workers runs out of memory and crashes. The queries that worker was running will likely not fail. The cluster will be able to retry any failed tasks and keep running the queries as if nothing happened. And the second reason for the reduced failure rate is that with the fault tolerance execution, we have a different kind of a, an execution model for queries. And that model is less likely to cause out of memory errors for queries. Uh, usually when we had our auto scaling cluster scaled to a minimum capacity, running a, a low number of workers, and a heavy query would try to run in that kind of cluster, we would face some out of memory failures. That's because when the traditional Trino execution model, we can only partition the query workload as much as the number of workers we have available. But that is not the same with the fault tolerance mode. In the fault tolerance mode, we can partition a query workload beyond the cluster number of workers. So that really helps uh, avoid memory failures, even we, if we're on a cluster with a low number of workers. To exemplify this, uh, in the two weeks before we started using fault tolerance, we faced around 200 query failures because of memory problems. But in the five months we're already using fault tolerance, we only got three kinds of failures uh, related to memory. I want to discuss a little bit about the benefits we saw from fault tolerance in auto scaling. Uh, we noticed that the fault tolerance mode allows a much more efficient auto scaling in our cluster. And to explain that better, I'd like to go through an example here. Let's say we have a cluster that is running four workers right now, and a long or heavy query starts running in this cluster. Let's call this query query X. Uh, if you're running a, an auto scaling cluster, maybe your cluster will scale up based on the CPU utilization or memory utilization of the workers. And let's say that query X uh, brings this kind of auto scaling and triggers a scale up midway through its execution. So you add two more workers midway through the query. What happens now depends if you're using the fault tolerance mode or not. So next slide, please. Yeah, if you're using the traditional mode for Trino, it's likely that the new workers that were scaled up won't help running query X. That's because the traditional mode divides the query workload in the for the number of workers that were available when the query started. And it's not flexible enough to recreate the plan to allow for a new worker to come in and start running this query. We can have that kind of flexibility with the fault tolerance mode. So if you have a query that is just waiting for more resources to run more tasks in the fault tolerance mode, as soon as you bring up new resources or new workers, those tasks can be scheduled in the new workers and the query X will get a, a boost on its execution. The new workers will start helping the execution right away. Uh, we talked a little bit about how the scale up is more efficient, but we also noticed much quicker scale downs with the fault tolerance mode as well. And that's related to the execution model differences we just discussed. In the traditional mode, nodes were often committed to running a query until its end. So if you were to gracefully shut down a worker, you'd have to wait for it to finish all the queries that it's currently running. And that's not the case in fault tolerance. In the fault tolerance mode, uh, you only have to wait for a worker to finish running its currently owned tasks. You don't need to wait for it to finish all the queries that it's helping to execute. So we have a much faster scale down. And now about the execution time differences we noticed. Like Eliza mentioned, uh, there was a time at Cora where we, we were using fault tolerance for a lot of our ETL jobs and A-B testing. And at that time, we noticed that we had a very bad performance degradation. It was over two seconds on the mean execution time of degradation for all kinds of queries. But that, that's mainly because of the overhead that the fault tolerance mode adds to queries. Now that we have to checkpoint some data in S3, the query execution time is a little bit extended, and that's particularly bad for the short queries. But if we only analyze, instead of looking at all queries, only look at the queries with more than one hour of CPU time, we can see that the effect on the execution time is reversed. So we actually see a 
reduction in the execution time for queries. Yep. As you can see on the table on the right, we had around three and a half minutes of uh, reduction in the mean execution time for queries above one hour of CPU time. Uh, I do want to note, though, that these results that I'm showing here uh, were calculated using Trino 406. And since then, there have been many optimizations for the fault tolerance mode. Specifically in Trino 412, there was some uh, optimizations for sharp queries, which improved latency by more than 40%. So these results may not be as accurate right now. Moving on uh, to the final part of the benchmark, I'd like to share a little bit about the costs that we saw. So for context, our Trino clusters are running on EC2 instances, and we are saving data on Amazon S3. We didn't notice uh, when we started using fault tolerance any significant changes in the costs of instances that we were using. But you may end up seeing some savings because of the reduced uh, execution time of long queries. But in our case, that wasn't too significant. We did, however, see a, a slight increase in costs for the S3 request side. Um, in our case, we saw around 7% of instance costs. We were now spending around that amount in S3 requests because of the checkpointing that fault tolerance needs to do to S3. Finally, uh, there's no particular change to the costs we spend on S3 storage. All of the checkpointed data is a low retention data, and it's not as significant as the data we store on the data lake or on S3 for other tables. So there's no particular impact on the storage side. That's about all we wanted to share on the benchmark side. And now just to summarize a little bit the learnings that we found throughout this experience. So in our case, maintaining both uh, a Trino cluster running default tolerance mode and another cluster without running fault tolerance was the best uh, scenario for us. We were able to route queries based on their resource usages or their length to each, either one of these clusters. And we got the benefits from using the fault tolerance, but still maintaining the short and quick execution time of light queries. And finally, if you're planning on starting to use the fault tolerance mode, uh, you can expect some cost increase, but in our experience, this has been well worth the, the spend because of the improved reliability we saw. That's all we had uh, on our experience from using fault tolerance at Cora. In case you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me or Eliza, and thanks for joining the session.